Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Moonbound Silence Chapter 42-47 Jasper's P.O.V After everyone left my office, Saren and I just sat in silence. There was so much going on in such a little time, that I didn't even know how Saren hadn't left the pack yet. I was the Alpha, I was trained to handle situations like this, but Saren, she had only been doing this for a couple of months, and now, things were starting to turn to utter sh, t. Jasper, she said softly. Are you okay? I should be asking you that. Why wouldn't I be? I just held my hands up gesturing everything that has been happening. Oh, she said getting up and sitting on my lap. You think that because of everything happening, I should be freaked out? Not freaked out, overwhelmed, maybe. It is a lot, and it is overwhelming, but I'm the Luna, and it comes with the territory, does it not? Besides, I'm an Alpha too, and a Primordial. Exactly dearest, you being a primordial already puts enough stress on you, now we have to deal with fake wolves, humans being kidnapped, Terine faking the paternity of her pup, and trying to find the proof that she k, lled Lizzie. But I'm not alone in this, I have you, and the others. We have each other. Yes, I freaked out with the whole humans being kidnapped because of me. But that was then, and this is now, I looked at her and furrowed my brows. What? When did you get so mature? Since I knocked Lorenzo one time. It gave me newfound confidence, and I've been getting better with my telepathy. Who knows, maybe I am this chosen werewolf that's supposed to kill, and bring peace to our pack. No one said anything about peace, dearest. So. Doesn't mean I can't try, I just smiled at her response. Are you hungry? I asked her knowing that lunchtime was rolling around. She nodded and smiled. We went downstairs to see what was being prepared for lunch and found Jason and Milan already in the dining room waiting. They looked to be in deep conversation and didn't see Saren or me standing there. You guys good? I asked. They both looked in our direction. Yeah, sorry, we're just talking about the whole Aunt Lizzie thing, Jason responded. I think it's stupid you didn't banish her, Jasper, Milan said to me. Milan, you know the laws, there's no proof other than Saren's hearsay, and you know the elders are going to want physical proof and not circumstantial evidence. Saren is the Luna, her word should suffice. But it doesn't, Milan GR0ANED and crossed her arms. This hit home for everyone. Jason, Milan, Kendrick and I all grew up together, and Kendrick's mom was always feeding us when our parents were too busy running the pack. She was the only ranked female who would rather be a housewife rather than have actual political responsibilities in the pack, so my dad let her. That was her job, as the beta female make sure we didn't get into trouble. We all had high respect for her, so her sudden death was a big blow to everyone. What can you guys tell me about her? Saren asked. What isn't there to talk about when it comes to Auntie Lizzie? Milan said smiling. She had a kind heart and she had a lot of love to give. Especially to Melody and Milan, Jason added. Why them? Because she didn't have a girl, she only had Ken and Keaton, I answered. She spoiled those two girls crazy, but then again, she spoiled all of us. Yeah, if we weren't werewolves, and we didn't train the way we did from an early age, we'd be fat pigs, for how she always fed us, Jason responded. She was always baking. Auntie Lizzie made the best chocolate chip cookies. Milan exclaimed. Really? Does anyone know the recipe? I can try and make it, 
Saren offered. Dearest, you bake. I do everything, Jasper. I was a slave for eight years remember. I couldn't help but get a little agitated hearing that. I don't think anyone knows her recipe, she never wrote it down anywhere. Everything she did she made from scratch, Milan answered. She was an amazing woman. She sounds like she was, I wish I could have met her, Saren says with a frown. She was friends with your mom too, I tell her, and she looks at me. Not as close as my mom was, but close enough. I remember when you were little before I knew you were my mate, your parents came to visit us once, and she went crazy over how cute you were. She always wanted a daughter, but got stuck with two boys instead. She was just as devastated to hear that your pack had been K-L-L-E-D. She was honestly hoping that you were Keaton's mate, Jason said. She what? I looked at him. I didn't know that. Well, can you blame her? Her and Keaton are closer in age, and look at her, I mean, she obviously doesn't compare to Milan, but Saren is beautiful. You have your wires crossed, Jace. Saren is the prettiest she-wolf there is, and you know it. Are you calling Milan ugly? No, I'm saying she doesn't compare to Saren. Both you ERS are wrong. We heard Kendrick say as he came into the dining room with my sister next to him. My angel is prettier than both of them. Sorry bro, but I think my Irene takes the tea, TLE of the prettiest she-wolf, Keaton said coming with Irene. This ended up ensuing into an all-out argument of whose mate is prettier. Saren's POV As the guys were arguing about who was prettier the girls and I just stood there together watching them. It was interesting watching the guys fighting like children, and it actually caught the attention of some of the kitchen staff, including Mr. and Mrs. Williams. What are those boys arguing about now? Mrs. Williams asked. Whose maid is prettier? Milan answered. Well, that's an argument no one is going to win, she said and shook her head. Milan can fight. Saren can cook. Irene is a nurse. Dot went to college. What does that have anything to do with how we look? Irene asked. It's just boys being boys kid, you get used to it. Those guys have always fought like this, Milan answered. Keaton is new to this mixture, but he's definitely fitting in, Melody said. Ivory is white wolf. Abigail is a fire amber red. That's rare too. Tundra is a silver wolf. Kali is pink. There are literally no records of a pink wolf anywhere. Oh my gosh, now they're comparing our wolves, Melody said shaking her head. Irene, I'm guessing your wolf's name is Abigail. I asked her and she nodded. That's a pretty name. Thank you, Luna. I like to call her Abby. So, kid, spill the beans, how is Keaton? Milan asked. He's great. He treats me with respect, loves me for who I am, and... No, no, no that's what I'm asking. Hey. I'm asking how good is he in bed? I mean, he obviously marked you, which means to have done the deed, she replied while wiggling her browns. Melody and I just looked at Irene as she extremely turned red. So, Spill, how big he is? Does he know how to go down on you? Have you gone down on him? You know, the juicy details. Gamma, Irene turned even redder and held her cheeks making the rest of us laugh. Irene, you need to share with us, because none of us are allowed to share with each other, I tell her. Why not? Seriously? Melody asked. Saren is mated to my brother, and I grew up with Jason. Yeah, I grew up with Kendrick, and Jasper, 
so I honestly don't want to hear about them either, Milan said shuddering at the thought. Come on, I say and nudge her. Hey, we look and see Michelle coming in. Hi, Michelle, she came and gave all of us a H.U.G. Who's this? she asked pointing at Irene. Michelle, this is Irene, she's Keaton's mate, Melody answered. My new sister-in-law. What? What happened to Terrine? We all gave her the Cliff Notes version of how Terrine had been lying about the pregnancy, and that her pup wasn't Keaton's after all. And that she was banned from the castle to live in the southernmost part of the territory. Michelle's expression hearing everything was almost comical in a sense because of the shock she was in. I had a feeling that Asterisk was lying when I smelled her, but I had to be sure, Melody said. That's some crazy sh, t, she looked over at Irene and smiled. I'm Michelle, I'm Milan's sister-in-law. You are? Irene asked. Yeah, I'm mates to her twin brother. One of the PAX head trainers, Angelo. Oh, I heard about you from Sirena, Owen's wife. She's one of the head nurses in the PAC hospital. I heard that you're also expecting, congratulations. Ah, thanks. Angelo and I are so excited, she replied and then looked at Milan and me. Why aren't you guys pregnant yet? I don't want a pup just yet. I'm a pack fighter, and I like action. Being a mom would take me away from that, and I ain't ready. Plus, Jason doesn't want a pup just yet either. He likes that we can travel without having to worry about a baby. Jasper and I haven't talked about kids yet. I'm technically still a kid myself, I mean, I'm only 18. I'm 18 too, Luna, but I would love to have a pup, Irene said. Have you talked to Keaton about that? Melody asked. We talk about it all the time. He wants a pup as soon as possible. She replied. Originally, Keaton was excited about being a father, so he feels betrayed knowing that Terrine used his hopes and dreams about being a dad against him that way. He wants us to complete the mating process after I move into the castle. Have you had your heat yet? Milan asked. Not yet, but I'm sure it's coming. Saren, have you had yours yet? Melody asked and I just shook my head. What? But you and brother have been together for almost three months now, I just shrugged my shoulders. It's okay, Luna. A female's heat is unpredictable. My mom said she didn't have hers until almost a year after she and my dad met, Irene responded. My mom didn't have hers for about six months after she met my dad too, Michelle said. Actually, even my mom took a few months also now that I think about it, Milan answered tapping her chin. What's it like? I asked. You know, going into heat. That's what it's like, Milan replied. It's not all bad, the is amazing, and you get to have it for hours on end, Melody answered. But... You get tired of seeing your mate after seeing nothing but them for three to five days non-stop, and the last thing you want is X. How do you know when you're going to start? Um, I felt dizzy and hot when I started, Melody answered. It almost felt like I had vertigo. I get super horny and it feels like I'm in a sauna, Milan replied. I haven't had mine yet, Michelle said. Then how did you end up pregnant? I asked. Luna, you don't have to be in heat to get pregnant, Irene said. You don't. No, being in heat just makes your chances a lot higher, but you can pregnant whenever, she replied. Oh come on man. You can't use powers as a reason why real is prettier. Kendrick shouted. Yeah Jasper. Jason and Keaton agreed. What's going on? Michelle asked. 
they're arguing on who's the prettier mate between the four of us, I tell her and point to Melody, Milan, Irene, and myself. Michelle just looked at us funny, and back at the guys. Well, that's an argument no one is going to win, she said making us laugh. You're all equally pretty in your own ways. How did this argument even start? Melody asked. It was Jason's fault, I said. What? It was Jasper's fault, Milan said shoving me. Jason is the one that said you're prettier than me. Jasper is the one that had to disagree. Are you saying that you're prettier than me? I never said that. It's what was implied. No it wasn't, I just said that Jasper is the one who had to tell Jason he was wrong. So, you agree with Jason, and you think you're prettier than me. Don't put words in my mouth Saren, I'll kick you. Please, I have powers. And you're not allowed to use them on PAC members. Unless it's to defend myself, and you just threatened to kick me, she scoffed knowing I had her cornered. I stuck my tongue at her knowing I won. We looked back at the guys who were still going at it. How do we stop them? I asked. Get Auntie Grace, Milan said. Did I hear my name? We turned around and see Grace and Ronan. Oh my, are those boys arguing over something stupid again? She asked. Yeah, we all said in unison. Watch and learn girls, she said and walked past us. All right that is enough, she shouted at them and smacked all of them in the back of the head. Irene, Michelle and I gasped, but Melody and Milan just smiled. Mom. Aunt Grace, the guys shouted at the same time. You four ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Fighting like children in front of your mates, and the kitchen staff, she said scolding them. On your knees. Hands up, all of the guys froze. Now, she roared, and they all went to the middle of the dining room and got on their knees and raised their arms above their heads. What? I see D my head and looked at Ronan. Lactic acid build up, the boys have to keep their arms up and stay on their knees for as long as they were arguing, Saren, sweetheart, how long have the boys been arguing, she asked me right on cue. Um, about half an hour maybe. Okay, since you boys are double the age you were when we started using this punishment, we're going to double the time. Mom. Come on. We're not kids. Well, if you four are going to argue like children, I'm going to punish you like children. Arms up. One hour. I'm the Alpha. And I'm still your mother. Pfft, all of us started to crack up which earned us glares from the guys. If you girls want to join them, keep laughing, Grace said to us and we immediately stopped. Why am I getting in trouble? Angelo's not even here, Michelle said trying to defend herself. Don't talk back to my mom. Melody shouted. We all looked at Grace who the look of death on her face. Michelle, do you want to join them? Grace asked. No ma'am. I didn't think so, she said putting her hands on her H, P.S. Set the table girls. Yes ma'am, we all replied and went to help the kitchen omegas set the table for lunch while the guys got their punishments. The kitchen staff was also giggling and snickering it was unfolding in the dining room. Melody, Irene, how are Kendrick and Keaton doing? I carefully ask. Ken is holding up, but he's frustrated, Melody answered. Keaton is angry but he's trying to hide it. I'm not sure who he is more pissed off at, her or his dad, Irene answered. I can't even imagine what he must be going through. Knowing that the person responsible for your mother's death also tried to trap you in a pregnancy. I mean, how inged up is that? Milan said softly. We looked at back at the guys who were still being scolded by Grace. 
Although seeing them being punished like children was comical, it didn't take away from the fact that someone close to everyone was taken from them. I just hoped that the investigation Jasper was conducting would bring about the answers that everyone wanted. Chapter 43 Saren's POV Another week has gone by without any big events. Jasper is still looking into Terrine and her involvement with Lizzie's murder. Irene finally came clean to her family about Keaton, and of course, they were apprehensive at first because they knew about Terrine but after Jasper had explained what had happened at the dinner they were invited to, they gave their blessing, though, Irene made it a point to say their blessing didn't mean squat because she would have been with Keaton regardless. I've been training with Lorenzo every day as always, and things are getting relatively easier and harder at the same time. His training courses are getting more and more intense as he said they would, and I've finally mastered, or somewhat, mastered using my telepathy using only my mind. We've been practicing with weapons the last week, fake weapons, but weapons, nonetheless. Lorenzo uses his powers to attack, while I use mine to defend. I've technically died six times in the last week, but that's still better before. Lorenzo has also been helping me train and using my powers to levitate heavy objects, like full-grown wolves and the wolf I've been practicing the most on is Jasper. But when he's at the office for his business, I practice on Jason. He's a tad smaller than Jasper but just has heavy. I've thrown him a few times into the snow, as well, as his wolf Cobalt. Cobalt apparently enjoys the adrenaline he gets from being flung around like a rag doll, so he doesn't mind it. Although we haven't been attacked again, we're all still waiting for it to happen. No one has let their guards down, and Jasper has made sure that only warriors that he trusts are guarding the perimeters of the territory. The extra security features he had Jason's dad put in help too. Now if anything is tampered with, Jasper gets an immediate notification on his phone. Victor has finally completely healed and was released from the hospital, and he decided that he wanted to live in the castle. What was more surprising was that he asked to train with our warriors to get back into shape. At first, Angelo and Owen were skeptical, but Jasper told them to let Victor train. Though Victor's training had a rough start. Obviously being human, he wouldn't be able to run the 10 to 12 miles our warriors did, but he did keep up for at least half of that. Victor said he was in a sport called cross-country when he was in high school which is why he has good stamina and endurance. Victor spends a lot of his time inside the castle gym, and I can tell that he's just relieving stress. Jason helps him with weight training, and Victor is very grateful for it. A lot of the pack members have been welcoming of him, but a lot are still nervous having a human in our midst. Jasper has commanded that if Victor is harmed then they would be banished. Of course, a lot of pack members felt betrayed that their alpha would side with a human, but Victor is a victim in his own right, and we vowed to protect him and help him find justice for himself, his girlfriend, and his family. I haven't seen much of Layla or her brigade after she had tried to k-l-l me. It's been months and I do see her from time to time around the castle, but all she does is glare at me. I can hear thoughts all the time, and it's always the same thing, I'm a slut, I don't deserve Jasper, she's going to get him back, she's going make me pay, and she hopes I die and burn in hell. I pay no attention to her because my bond with Jasper is strong, and I don't think it will ever break. No one has heard from Terrine ever since Hugo and Maddox had taken the rest of her stuff to her cottage. They said that she's tried to make it work, but with no money, she can't really buy furniture. So, I decided to be nice and told them to also take the furniture from the room she was using and deliver it to her. She at least deserved a bed to sleep in. I also had two of the castle maids go to her cottage to help make a little more livable. But, I did tell them that if she gave them any problems, 
to immediately leave without any word. Thankfully, Terine welcomed the help but didn't say thank you when they were done. Jasper questioned me when I went out of my way for Terine, but I told him that it wasn't for her. It was for her pup. A newborn shouldn't in life filth. I lived in filth, and I knew what it was like, and Killian didn't deserve that. He was an innocent bystander in all of this. He didn't ask to have a crazy mom and no dad. Keaton has felt some guilt knowing Killian has no father, but not enough to be his father. Dylan has been secluded a lot the last week and doesn't really speak to anyone. His thoughts are clear as day. He's upset with himself for getting involved with Terine, the person who K, LLED his mate, his wife, and the mother of his children. Kendrick has tried to speak to him, but Dylan won't respond. Jasper finally told his parents and Jason's parents about Terine and how she was responsible for Lizzie's death. To say that Grace and Jason's mom Zoe were upset would be putting it lightly. They wanted to go K, LL her right then and there. Ronan and Jason's dad Felix had to hold them back before they shifted in Jasper's office. Once calm, they both broke down which in turn, made me break down. Grace lost two of her closest friends to murder, first my mom, and then Kendrick's mom. I cried, even more, when Grace told me that it was Lizzie who gave me the nickname Saren. Someone I didn't even know was the reason behind the name I grew up loving. I hated my actual name because it was a boy's name, but she's the one who put my first and middle name together and told my mom that it was more fitting. Ronan decided to handle the investigation himself. I was confused at first, but apparently, Ronan works as a private investigator for wealthy humans. He's also been helping look into any other missing persons that would potentially be victims like Victor. Jasper seemed to have a handle on things, and I was seriously impressed with how amazing he really does run this pack. I almost felt unneeded, but Jasper assured me that he's able to get things done because I'm with him. Currently, I'm training with Lorenzo, outside, in the middle of a blizzard, but he says it's the perfect time for me to test my abilities controlling elements when they're out of control. Luna, what I want you to do to is take the storm, and calm it around the two of us. I don't how or what you do, just do it, and make it so I don't have to scream at the top of my lungs for you to hear me, I stood there holding myself. To keep myself warm while I tried to think. Although I was in a H.Uge snow jacket, scarf, boots, gloves, beanie, and boots, I was still freezing. I tried to think of what I could do, but the bitter cold was making it hard to think straight. I already knew voicing how cold I was wasn't going to change his mind, so I concentrated hard. I pictured myself warm by the fireplace being held by Jasper and making s'mores. I held out my arms and closed my eyes, taking in the harsh winds and icy snow hitting WH at little of my face was exposed. I decided to create a vector shield around us. I pushed back the wind and the snow, and sure enough, when I opened my eyes, Lorenzo and I were in a little cocoon of empty space with the wind, snow, and ice just outside of us. Very good, he said and clapped his hands. Perfectly executed, Luna, you're getting better and better with time, and I'm very proud of how far you have come. Thank you, I said sincerely. Even I was amazed at how well this vector formed around us. You're more in control of your emotions, and which is helping you stay more in control with your powers. Although you haven't gained any more since I've been here. It won't be surprising if you gain a few more over the next couple of months or years. You really think so? I know so, I just cd my head at him. I think it's time that I share the last bit of information regarding your heritage as a primordial. Let us go inside, I nodded my head, and let the vector fall slowly as we made our way to the castle door. Once we were a few feet away, I dropped the shield and we ran inside. 
Once we dusted ourselves off from the snow and ice, we went to my office to speak in private. What did you need to tell me? I asked him once we were both situated at my desk. Luna. Please, call me Saren. I think we've known each other long enough to drop formalities. Very well, Saren, I smiled at him. Saren, there is one more vital piece of information you need to know before I leave you. Leave me. Yes, child. I'm not meant to stay with you. I was merely a teacher to help you reach your full potential, and I think you have now, I immediately pouted at the thought of him leaving. Lorenzo was the only other werewolf out there who knew what it felt like to be different. Saren, you're not only the chosen one. What do you mean? You may be the one who is chosen to destroy Alessandro if he were ever to come after you, but you are also the one that will continue our legacy. What? Saren, you know that your bond with the Alpha is important right? I nodded my head. That is because you are meant to continue our bloodline. You are meant to produce more primordials. What? You and Jasper are the chosen pair, my jaw hit my desk. When the chosen female is mated to a pure-blooded alpha, their bond will be strongest to ever exist, they will produce the strongest primordials to ever walk the earth. Saren, you are not just a primordial, you are a direct descendant of William, the first primordial. But, there's no William in my family tree. That's because your family tree doesn't go back that far. It's not supposed to. No one is supposed to know that you're related to him. He was and is still in fact the strongest. He held all of the powers that our kind could ever possess, and you will too. What? Saren, I believe that you are also immortal, I audibly gulped. Just like William. Wait. You said that you're only one that, he smirked at me and winked. My mouth opened wide and I staggered back in my chair. You, you, I was breathing heavily in shock and disbelief. You're William. I am. You've been lying this whole time. Omitting the truth, he said easily with batting an eye. But why? Why change your name? Why lie about the powers that you have? Saren, there are many things I've chosen to keep secret, but the fact that you are my granddaughter, and that you will possess all of the powers that I have. You have the power of premonition, don't you? I do. So, you knew what was going to happen to my family, my pack. I did. Then why didn't you stop IT? I screamed slamming my hands on my desk. Saren. I was too late to stop it, but I also didn't know that you had been born, I was not allowed to know. What do you mean not allowed? Saren, I signed a contract with higher powers and the with Mong goddess that if they were ever to allow your birth, that I would be the last to know if it, and that you would be kept safe at all costs, away from me until the time was right. My family dying isn't keeping me safe. I'm sorry child but there was nothing I could do. At the time, I was in living in Vanuatu off the grid. When I got the premonition, I wasn't even aware of who was being attacked. Would have you have stopped it if you could? I asked as tears fell from my eyes. Yes, I would have done everything in my power to save your family, I sat down and sobbed. Saren. I didn't know it was your family until Jasper told me about your upbringing. I'm so sorry for what you had to endure, but I believe that it all happened for a reason. How can you say that? Saren, if you didn't go through everything that you did, I don't think you would have built up enough strength and willpower to fight back the way that you have. You use the anger and hatred you have for the Blood Moon Pack to fuel your rage that helps control your powers. I believe that you being a slave is what kept your ident, Ty a secret, until it was time for you to be with Jasper, I looked at him and tears have stopped suddenly. He was right, 
when I was in slavery at Blood Moon, everyone thought I was an Omega. No one knew who I was, let alone what I was. Saren, you are destined for greatness, and there isn't much left that I could teach you, I let out a sigh, and we just sat in comfortable silence. This was a lot of information to take in, but one thing I got out of it was that my pups, our pups would also be like me, powerful, and rare. I wonder what Jasper would think about all of this. After Lorenzo and I talked, he went back to his room, and I waited for Jasper to come home. I was getting worried because the storm wasn't letting up, if anything, it was getting worse. It was past five in the evening, and Jasper was normally home by now. I tried to call him, but it was going straight to voicemail. I tried to mind link him, but it wasn't connecting. That only happened when he was out of reach, or if, no, I didn't want to think the worse. I figured the storm was causing traffic, or road closures and tried to be patient. Where is he? I shouted pacing the living room. It was almost nine in the evening, and Jasper still wasn't home. I was starting to panic. Jasper rarely ever came home late from work, and the off chance that he ever did, he would text or call to let me know. Saren, sweetheart, don't panic, it has to be the storm, Grace said to me H. Ugging my shoulders to calm me down, but nothing was going to calm me down until Jasper came through the front door. We should send a few warriors out to look for him, this isn't like Jasper, and this more than just being a little late, Milan said. I looked at her and thought about it. The blizzard was really bad, and I didn't want to risk anyone getting lost or injured, so I opted not to risk anyone else's life. Jasper would be upset if I did. Okay, if you don't want any warriors to go, let me and Ken go, Jason said. I wanted to protest, but before I could, they were out the door and shifted into their wolves. I will go with them, Lorenzo said and followed after the boys. We watched from the front windows as their wolves disappeared into the night. Please be okay, Jasper. Chapter 44 Kendrick's POV Jason, Lorenzo and I went off into the storm. Even for werewolves, this weather was pretty cold, and we were out here trying to find Jasper. I had to admit, this wasn't like him, and I was kicking myself for not having gone to the office with him, but Melody had an ultrasound today, and Jasper commanded me to stay home for it. Jace, can you sense anything? I asked in a mind link. No, the wind is too strong. I can't smell sh, t. I wonder if Lorenzo's heightened sense of smell can pick up anything. Too bad we can't ask him. Jason was right. Since Lorenzo wasn't a part of our pack and just a guest, we couldn't link him or communicate with him. There were absolutely no humans on the road, I mean, why would there be, the blizzard was out of control, and most humans are smart enough to stay home. I don't think anyone realized how bad the storm was going to get today since it was barely snowing this morning when Jasper left the territory. We were well past the territory gates and were making our way down the access roads of the highway when Lorenzo perked up and paused. He lifted his head high and started to sniff. I guess his heightened sense of smell was actually picking up on something. After a few minutes, he turned to look at us gestured his head, and took off running like bats out of hell. Cobalt and Ajax had to run at their top speeds to keep up with him, but even then, we could barely make out his silhouette through all of the snow being blasted from the storm. Luckily, after running for about ten minutes, Lorenzo came to a sudden halt, and I realized we were on top of a bridge. From the faded tire treads that turned into skid marks, and the paint and scratches smeared along the guardrails, there was an accident of some sort, but there were no cars on the bridge. Lorenzo walked slowly by the rails, and it looked like an impact had occurred. 
Lorenzo peeked over and howled suddenly. Cobalt and Ajax also peeked over where Lorenzo looked, and we could see Jasper's car in the gorge. We took off to the other end of the bridge where there would be an access point down into the gorge. Being in wolf form allowed us to hurdle over rocks, trees and even the steep jump we had to take. We all landed on our paws with no injuries, and we raced to the car. Come on, Jasper, be in there, be alive. I kept saying to myself when we reached the car. It was completely totaled, and knowing if the driver were human, it would be a miracle if they had survived, but even for a wolf, this accident could be fatal. We all quickly changed back to human form even knowing the winter storm would be freezing to us, but we needed to make sure Jasper was okay. The car landed on its side with the passenger side down. I peeked inside from the driver's side that was pointed up. Here's not here. I shouted. He's not in the car. Jason and Lorenzo came over, and there were no signs of Jasper, but there were signs of blood. It was Jasper's blood, which meant he was injured but he wasn't in the car. He must have crawled out, but by the look of the blood, he's badly injured. Jason shouted as the wind howled. Let's shift back and see if we can find him. Lorenzo said and we both nodded. We shifted back and felt better knowing our fur was going to keep us warm, but even then, it was freezing. Lorenzo started to sniff around, for Jasper's scent. After a few minutes, Lorenzo howled again and took off. Running. We followed him, and he was speed walking through the gorge when we came upon an embankment. Lorenzo lifted his head and growled. We came to where he was, and what he was growling at. There were faded tire marks in the snow and a small pool of blood that still stained the snow underneath. Lorenzo jumped into action and took off up the embankment while Jason and I followed as fast as we could. I have to give it to this guy, Jason, he's determined to find Jasper as much as we are. I think it's because of Saren. Lorenzo cares about her because she's like him. He calls Saren his family because apparently all primordials have a DNA link, even though it's a weak one. I also think it has to do with that fact if something happens to Jasper, it could shake the bond he has with Saren, which may alert the vampire of his existence. Good point. Let's hope we can find him. We ran for miles through the forest and ended at a back road that led into the city. We couldn't go any further than this, at least not in wolf form. The bigger problem we were now faced with was the fact that there were more than a few tire treads on this road, and based on Lorenzo's frustration, he lost the scent. This wasn't good, this was not good at all. Jasper was in an accident, was injured, and it looks like someone grabbed him. How were we going to tell Saren and his parents? How was I going to tell Melody? Lorenzo huffed and sniffed a little while longer and let out another howl, but this time, it was one of anger and frustration. He turned to look at us with an apologetic look. We knew then we were s-h-t out of luck. With heavy shoulders, we backtracked and headed back home. Jasper's POV It's really coming down out there, I heard one of my employees say in the lobby. Yeah, this storm came out of nowhere, another agreed. Hopefully, it lets up before the day ends, someone else said. I looked out of the windows in the lobby. I looked at my watch, and it was just past noon, and a blizzard was making its way through the city. I decided that I would let everyone have an early out to get home before it potentially got any worse. I got back to my office, and called Human Resources. Yes, Mr. Valencia. Jeanette, please send out an early release email to all employees. Everyone will be paid for a full day's work, and are permitted to VPN from home until further notice. Right away, sir. That includes you and the others in HR. Yes, sir. 
Please be safe. You as well, good night. Good night, a few minutes later I got a copy of the email sent out by Human Resources. I decided to finish up my day, since driving in a blizzard isn't anything new for me, plus, I have chains on my tires. If anything were to happen, I could always just shift and go home in wolf form. Before I knew it, it was almost five o'clock, and I realized that I was an hour late heading home. I packed up my stuff and locked the office. I made sure that only security was left in the building and all other employees had in fact gone home. Good night, Mr. Valencia, please be safe. You too, Frankie, stay warm. He saluted his hand and opened the door for me to the parking garage. The snow had come in though the openings of the garage and the wind was strong. I was a little worried driving in this storm, and I knew it was going to take me to double the time to get home. I tried to call Saren, but I had no reception. Just perfect, cell towers are probably down, I said out loud. I got in my car and started the ignition. I waited for about 20 minutes for the engine to warm up, and then made my way home. I took my time and figured I would just mind Link Saren when I got closer to the mountains because I would be in range. Unfortunately, the office building was over an hour away, and our mind Link couldn't reach that far. I wanted to hurry and get home so Saren wouldn't worry, and knowing her, she's probably tried to contact me more than once by now. The drive was horrible, and I could barely see anything. Thankfully, there weren't a lot of other cars on the road, and my tire chains were helping me keep traction on the highway. I was careful and cautious of black ice. As I made my way, I had to take a few detours because of road closures. This was going to make getting home harder, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I looked down at the clock on my dashboard. It was almost nine, and I was still about thirty minutes from home. I figured this was a good time to mind Link Saren to let her know that I'm okay, and I would be home soon. I came upon the bridge and decided to wait until I crossed it to mind Link since it would require my eyes to cloud over and I would lose my sight for a split second. I was halfway across the bridge when I hit something and my tired blew out. I screamed curses as I tried to gain traction of my car, but I hit the guardrail and my car spun out of control. I hit the railing again, and I could feel my car falling over the bridge. Blade took over, and he tried to get me out of the car before it completely went over, but we were too late. The car went over the bridge and fell into the gorge. The last thing I remember is hitting my head and falling into darkness. Saren's POV. It was almost eleven, and Kendrick and the others still weren't back yet. I was in full-on panic mode at this point because no one could get through to Jasper. Sweetheart, you need to calm down, Grace said to me. I'm sure the boys will find him and bring him home. Aunt Grace, Jasper's never been this late, and he's never not called. What if something bad really did happen? Now, now, you mustn't think that way, think positive, okay, she said to me, but I could hear her thoughts, and she was just as worried as I was if not more, but I wasn't going to call her out on her bullsh, t right now. Just then, the door flung open, and the guys came in. But what made my heart stop was that they didn't have Jasper. Ken. Jason. Mr. Rossi, where is my son? Ronan asked. I'm sorry, but we couldn't find him, he looked at me with an apologetic expression. It looks like he was ran off the road on the bridge about 30 minutes away from the territory. We found his car in the gorge under the bridge. What? we all exclaimed. When we got down to the car, there was blood, but Jasper wasn't in the car. Lorenzo picked up his scent, and we followed it through the gorge to an embankment, and then it just stopped, Jason continued while Milan held a blanket around him. 
there were tire treads and a small pooling of blood. We followed the tired treads the best we could, but we ended up at a fork in the road, Kendrick added and held his own blanket. I'm sorry Saren, but we think Jasper may have been grabbed, I shook my head profusely and grabbed my hair. I lost control and broke down. Then I remember something and looked straight at Lorenzo. Did you know this was going to happen? No, I didn't he replied, and he was telling the truth. What's the use in having the power of premonition if you can't see something like this coming? I knew I just outed him in front of everyone, but at that point, I didn't care. Jasper was missing, and potentially injured and bleeding. Saren, it doesn't work that way. I only get them when I'm supposed to. What do you mean when you're supposed to? Are you telling me that saving Jasper's life isn't important enough to get a vision? Saren, calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. I screamed and threw him across the living room with my powers. He immediately stood his feet, and used his powers against me, and flung me across the living room as well. I landed on the sofa but the impact made it roll over. Do not forget who you are talking to, Saren, he growled. I was pissed off that I couldn't stop myself. I stood to my feet, and my eyes started to glow. I focused on a vase and flung it at him with full force, which of course he stopped. I expected that and flung another vase at him and that one made impact to his head. You're immortal. Why did you come back? Go out there and find him. I roared and flung every inanimate object in the living room at him. Books, vases, lamps, pillows, and even the coffee table. Saren that is enough, he roared back and shook the entire living room and stopped every single object midair and made them fall to the ground. Even though I was a Luna, and a primordial, the aura Lorenzo was emitting at that moment was none I had ever seen. His eyes were a crimson red, it was almost as if you could see his alpha aura surround him. What? Kendrick said. I hadn't even noticed everyone was on their knees in fear. This wasn't Lorenzo, this was William. Neil, he commanded, and I submitted. Saren, I understand that you are worried about Jasper, we all are, but that does not give you the right to disrespect me. I am more powerful than you in more ways than one, and you best not forget that again, I could feel him glaring at me as I looked at the floor. No one has ever been able to make me submit. Not Eric, Ash, Nicole, or even Jasper, mostly because I'm more powerful than Jasper is, but I never tell him that to his face. But William, he was something totally different. He emitted more power than I had ever seen. I guess being the first primordial to ever exist has something to do with it. After a few minutes, things finally calmed down, and everyone finally stood their feet, that is, everyone except me. For some one reason, Calais and I were afraid to stand. Saren, stand, William said to me. I stood, but I kept my gaze to the floor. Mr. Valencia. I'm sorry that I was unable to find our son, but I do believe that he is alive because if he was not, Saren would know. Yes, Mr. Rossi, I too believe my son is alive, Ronan said. Beta, what is the plan? William asked. As soon as the storm dies down, we will send out trackers to where we lost his scent. They are the most sk. LLED in tracking and should be able to pick up the trail again. I will join them, William said, and Kendrick nodded. Jason, tell your dad, Ronan said, and Jason and Milan went to go see his parents. Melody, get a few of the Omegas to clean up this mess. No, William said and stopped her. Saren, you made the mess, you clean it. I gasped and looked at him in shock. Mr. Rossi, she is the Luna, Ronan said to him. 
she wasn't acting like the Luna when she lost control of her emotions. Regardless of any situation, she needs to remain in control of her emotions and her actions. She was acting like a child, so I'm going to treat her like a child, he said bluntly and looked back at me. Clean up the mess Saren, without your powers, for a split second, I felt like I was back at Blood Moon, but William was right. I caused this mess because I lost control. I wasn't acting like a Luna, so why should he treat me like one? I went to the broom closet and took out the cleaning supplies and got to work. Callie was whimpering because she was worried about Jasper, but also because she was ashamed that she too lost control. It wasn't just me who was using my powers to try and harm William, it was her too, and she was embarrassed by her actions, as was I Melody and Grace tried to help me, but I told them not to. This was my rightful punishment, and I needed to learn to my lesson. Grace was angry with William, but I told her not to be. In all honesty, I was somewhat grateful that William put me in my place. He always warned me what would happen if I lost control, and I proved him right. I became a danger to those around me, and I felt horrible because of it. Had it not been William the first was flinging objects at it, it could have been a pack member or a family member, and they would have been seriously hurt or even k, l l e d. I quickly cleaned up all of the broken glass, picked up all of the books, and pillows, and fl. PPD the couch back over. I threw everything away, rearranged anything that wasn't broken back to its rightful place. When I was done, I went to the kitchen, and got a bottle of water, and went back to my room. I sat on the bed and H. Ugged my knees. I didn't sleep at all as I was too worried about Jasper. I decided that I would join the trackers in the morning to help search for Jasper. My heightened sense of smell and my bond with Jasper should be helpful, at least I hoped. The next morning, the storm had finally let up, and the sun was out. I quickly got dressed in a jacket, thick leggings, and my snow boots. I threw my hair into a ponytail, and met everyone downstairs. Saren, what are you doing? Kendrick asked. I'm going with you guys. Saren. You're the Luna, you need to stay home and take care of the pack. No. He's my mate, and I'm going with you. Lorenzo isn't the only one with a heightened sense of smell. Besides, no one here has a better bond with Jasper than I do, I tell him sternly. He looks back at William, and he nods his head. As we head out, I hear William's thoughts. Saren. I'm disappointed in you. I'm sorry William. I was afraid because of Jasper. I don't know what I would do if I ever lost him. I understand that, but that does not give you the right to act that way and attack me. You are a Luna. You need to remain calm, poised and collected when situations such as this arise. If I'm right, and you are immortal, you will outlive Jasper. He is going to age over time, and he is going to die while you remain young and healthy. I don't want to live in a world without Jasper. You won't have a choice if you are immortal. It's just the way it is. How do you do it? How have you been able to live all this time knowing that all of your loved ones will eventually perish? With time it gets easier. I couldn't help the tears that streamed down my face when he said those words. Knowing that if I am indeed immortal, I would have watched Jasper get older, and eventually leave this world where I will be alone again. I pray to the moon goddess that I'm not immortal. After about an hour and a half hike from the territory, we ended up the bridge and I could see the remnants of the accident. I looked over the bridge even though I'm terrified of heights and could see Jasper's car. William led us down to the gorge so the trackers could try and pick up anything that William and the guys may have missed because of the storm. Everything was covered in snow, but the tracker could still sense Jasper's blood in the wreckage. 
They followed his scent and ended up the same embankment William and the guys ended up at. We all hiked up again, with Kendrick and Jason helping me along the way just in case and sure enough, we ended up at a crossroad. One way led into the city and the other way led deeper into the mountains on the opposite side. Luna, something isn't right, Felix said. Even in his older age, Jason's dad was one of the best trackers the pack had along with head trainer Maddox. What is it? I asked making my way to the front of the line. His scent goes both ways. What? I went out to the middle of the crossroad and closed my eyes. I took a deep breath to calm my thoughts, and I could feel William next to me. His presence was encouraging me and I concentrated on Jasper's scent of fresh rain. It could actually be confused with the fresh snow, but the snow smelled clean and refreshing, while Jasper's scent was sweeter and more relaxing. Anything? Kendrick asked. SHHH, I shushed him and concentrated, honing in onto Jasper's scent. Then a small breeze came through, and I picked it up, they took him into the city. We can't go into the city on foot, it would take too long. We need to get a few of the cars, Kendrick said, and I nodded. You four, go back to the castle, and get four of the pack SUVs and come pick up us. Yes, Beta, the four men shifted and went back in the direction of the castle using the forest to conceal their wolves. I looked towards the city and prayed that we would find Jasper. Chapter 45 Jason's POV It's been five days since Jasper disappeared. We scoured the city for him, but we lost his scent in the massive array of scents that flooded the city of Detroit. We had no choice but to file a missing person report with the human authorities in case he showed up in the city, and my dad and his trackers have been using their SK, LLS to try and locate him the wolf way. Saren is a mess, and she's losing hope, but the worst part is that she said that she can't feel him anymore. He's not dead by any means, but she is saying that their bond is fading. Even her wolf can't feel her bond with Blade either. Lorenzo is afraid that if Saren loses any more hope than she has, this will allow the vampire to know of her existence. Kendrick has been trying to keep Melody calm because she's still susceptible to a miscarriage brought on by stress. Jasper's parents are also on the verge of a breakdown, and the pack is doing their best to stay strong. Although Saren is not all there emotionally, she takes her job as a Luna seriously, and with Lorenzo's help, she is commanding the pack and they are listening, however, no can deny that it's not the same without Jasper. Currently. All of us are sitting in the dining room eating lunch, or at least trying to. Saren, sweetheart, how are you holding up? Grace asked her. Like sh, t, I miss Jasper, and I'm scared. When I woke up this morning, our bond had faded even more, it's almost as if it's not there. Saren, you must not think that you will open the door for Alessandro to find you. Lorenzo said to her. Does it matter anymore? If we don't find Jasper, then what's the point? Saren, it's only been five days, Milan started to stay but Saren cut her off so fast. Only five days? Only five days? That's almost a week Milan, she roared standing to her feet. Someone took my mate. My boyfriend. The love of my life. And you have the audacity to say it's only been five days? How would you feel if Jason went missing for five days? She screamed slamming her tiny fists on the table cracking it in half. No could say anything to that because we all knew the answer. Saren, we all turned to look in the doorway and saw Victor. Still no luck, he asked cautiously. Saren took a deep breath and started to break down again. Victor, no offense, but this is a pack matter, Kendrick tells him. I understand, but I think I can be of some help, he replies, and we look at him. 
My family has a lot of money, and they also have police ties. My dad's closest friend is a retired police chief, and currently works a highly respected P.I. Victor, we appreciate the gesture, we also know a lot of pies, Ronan said. I respect that sir, but do they have a perfect case record in missing person recoveries with more than 40 years under their belt? We all looked at Ronan, who just pursed his L, P.S. together. I'm 100% positive that my parents hired him to look for me until my death was pronounced. I really do believe that he can help you find your son. What's his name? Saren asked. His name Malcolm Harrison. Do you know his contact information? Not off the top of my head, no, but if you Google his name, he pops up almost immediately, I pulled out my phone looked up the name, and sure enough, this P.I. popped up almost immediately. I looked through his recognitions as a police officer and him making his way up to chief with an almost perfect record in missing persons from children to the elderly, even finding someone's kidnapped dog. This guy's credentials are impressive, I said and kept reading. Uncle Ronan, I think we should try to use him. Saren, it's up to you sweetheart, he responded. Do it, she said without hesitation. Offer him whatever he wants, I don't care about the money, I just want Jasper home, I dialed the number, and it rang twice before someone answered. Harrison P. I. Mr. Harrison, my name is Jason Lexington, and I wanted to hire you for your services. What is it that you need? My best friend has been missing for five days, and the authorities don't seem to be pulling their weight to find him. His family and I have hired multiple other investigators, but they've all come up empty-handed. I've read your credentials and heard about you having a near-perfect record in locating missing persons. What's his name? Jasper Valencia. Oh, yes, I've seen the missing person reports on him. I would think investigators would be working diligently to find him. That's what we thought too, but that doesn't seem to be the case, will you please help? His girlfriend and family are willing to pay whatever you ask. Have they received any sort of ransom demands? No. Does he have a pattern of disappearing? No. Are he and his girlfriend on good terms? More than good, they practically worship each other. Text me his last known location and a recent photo of him. Sure. I'm also asking for $100,000. Let me tell his family, one moment, I cover the receiver, he wants a hundred grand to find him. Tell him I'll double it if finds Jasper in 48 hours. Mr. Harrison, his girlfriend is willing to pay you to double if you can Jasper in the next the 48 hours. I see she's desperate to find him, desperation shows me that money is not an issue and that she is truly scared. You have no idea. Very well, I accept the challenge, I will give you a call when I have any news, good day. He hung up on me and I quickly sent him a photo of Jasper and his last known location, which was the accident on the bridge. I looked at Saren shocked that she would make such a bold move, but I agreed with the P.I., she was desperate. Thank you Victor, hopefully, this guy is as good as he seems, I tell him. Malcolm won't accept that money, I hope you know that Saren, she looked up at him. Malcolm spills that the magic number to see who is really willing to pay whatever it takes to find someone. How does he make a living if he doesn't get paid? Kendrick asked. Oh, he gets paid for his other work, you know cheating spouses, background checks on potential gold diggers, that kind of stuff, but when it comes to finding missing people, he does that for free, but he was a cop so he's cautious when taking on jobs like that. That magic number of a hundred grand is way of knowing if the person hiring him is involved or not. He's learned that true victims who are desperate to find their loved ones will sell their own soul, 
and those that oppose the amount or get defensive are involved with the victim going missing. Wow, he's a smart guy, I reply. He is, which is why I'm certain he will find Jasper, in less than the time frame Saren just gave, we all nodded. Victor, are you hungry, son? Ronan asked. Yeah, but I can wait, I don't want impose any more. Nonsense child, Grace said getting up. Come sit, and I will have a plate made for you, she said and forced Victor to sit with us. She went to the kitchen and we could hear her barking orders at the kitchen staff. Thank you, Victor, Saren said softly. Thank me when he's found, he replied bluntly. We all nodded while he ate his food. All we could now was wait. Ring 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 ring. Hello. Mr. Lexington. Mr. Harrison. I've found Mr. Valencia. What? Where? He was wandering aimlessly in Cleveland. Cleveland? What was he doing there? I don't know, I wasn't actually the one who found him. A local recognized him and actually called the authorities in Detroit. My daughter works for Detroit Dispatch, and was the one who alerted me of the call that came in, U.S. Marshals have picked him up and are transporting him to the police headquarters downtown right now, he should be there within an hour. Thank you, Mr. Harrison, I know you said you didn't find him, but thank you for calling and letting us know. Please tell me how we can send the payment. No need, when it comes to missing persons, I don't take payment. I'm just happy that he is alive and well. Good luck to you. Thank you again, thank you. I hung up and ran straight to Saren's office where I know where everyone current was trying to strategize on how to find him. I don't think I had ever run so fast up those five flights of stairs. He's been found. I screamed while barging through the door. What? They all asked standing from their seat. Harrison just called, Jasper's been found. He's being transported to the police headquarters in the city, come on. I don't think I'd see people move so fast. Although everyone wanted to come, we decided to have Melody, Milan, Keaton, Irene, Victor, and Lorenzo hang back. Saren, Kendrick, Grace, Ronan, and I went to go get Jasper along with Angelo as the driver. Saren's POV. I couldn't believe it. I seriously could not believe it, but Jasper was finally found. After seven agonizing torturous days, we were finally going to bring Jasper home. I couldn't understand why I felt our bond fading while he's been gone, but just knowing that I'm going to see him soon, be in his arms was making me feel the bee dot utter flies, but I still couldn't figure out why our bond still felt almost half empty. I figured it had to do with the fact that he was gone for so long, and according to Jason, he was in a completely different state. It had to be the distance. I was certain that being close to him again would make our bond strong. The drive to the human police station took longer than we wanted, but Angelo tried to get us there as fast as he could without going too much over the speed limit. The anticipation to see Jasper was K-ling me. I wanted to touch him, H.U.G. him, K-S.S. him, and everything else in between. My anxiety was getting the best of me and luckily Grace was holding my hand the entire way, but I could tell that she too was anxious. Saren, Aunt Grace, he's fine. He's alive, and we're going to see him soon, Kendrick said from the seat behind us and put his hands on our shoulders. I just nodded and took a deep breath. When we reached the police station, I was nervous because I had never been surrounded by so many humans before let alone humans with guns. I could sense the occasional supernatural amongst them, but overall, at least 90% of the people in the building were human. I looked around a little nervous, but eventually, we made it up to the front desk. Hi, can I help you, 
the lady cop asked us. We're here for Jasper Valencia, we are his parents, Ronan said to her. ID please, everyone handed their IDs to her, except for me. Ma'am, you too. I don't have one, I answered honestly. She left her wallet at home, Jason said quickly. We were in such a rush to get here, she forgot to grab her purse. She's Jasper's girlfriend, the lady cop looked at everyone else who all nodded their head. Okay, since you all are vouching for her, it's fine. Please go through security there to the left. He's currently being held in room 105 to the right. Thank you, we all said and did what she told us. There was a long line at the security thing, and I was honestly weirded out by whatever this machine was. Everyone had to put their personal belongings into small bowls, their purses onto a moving belt thing, and there were at least ten policemen and women checking every single person that walked under this arch-looking thing. Next, I heard the policeman yell, and it was my turn. I didn't have anything, so I just stood in front of the arch and waited for him to tell me to walk under it. When I did, he stopped me and put his hands on me. I was a little creeped out, but he didn't touch me inappropriately, but I could hear his thoughts. This girl is pretty. Too bad she's apparently that Valencia guy's girlfriend. Of course the rich and famous get all the good-looking girls. All right, you're good he said to me and I walked to the side and waited for everyone else. Once everyone went through security, we made our way to room 105 where the lady cop up front said Jasper was waiting. I was practically running looking for the room, and of course, with my horrible sense of direction, I ended up passing the room. Sarah and I stopped and turned around. You passed it, Kendrick said coming to get me. Sorry, I said and followed him. We went into the room, and the sight before me almost my knees buckle and collapse. Jasper was sitting with a police officer and he was in his business clothes that he wore the morning he disappeared. Jasper! Grace and Ronan shouted. He turned around and his godly features made my heart race. It really was him. Mom! Dad! I watched as they aged ugged him, and Grace started to cry. I'm okay mom, I promise, stop crying, I heard him tell her. ER, you had worried sh, plus. Kendrick shouted. Ken, get over here man. They gave each other a h.ugh high five and h.ugged. Jace, get in here. Jasper shouted at Jason and he joined them in a big brotherly group H.U.G. Where's my sister and Milan? Home, they've been worried S.H. Plus two, but we obviously couldn't bring everyone, so we only brought the really important people, Kendrick said and turned to face me. Jasper looked me in the eyes, and I couldn't help myself. I ran and jumped into his arms and started to cry. Jasper, I've been so worried, I thought something horrible happened to you. Where have you been? I cried and nuzzled my face into his neck, but the moment I took in his sense something immediately felt off. There were no sparks. There were no fireworks when our skin made contact and I felt that he wasn't age.ugging me back. He was tense, and just standing there. I pulled away and looked him in the eyes and he was just staring at me with his mouth agape, and his brow lifted in confusion. He looked to his parents, then to Kendrick and Jason, and then back at me. My gaze left his eyes, went to his neck, and what I saw immediately flooded my eyes with tears. Jasper, where's your mark? I asked him making everyone gasp. But instead of answering my question, he asked me one in return and it was something I never thought I would hear him say. I'm sorry, but who are you? Chapter 46 Saren's POV I'm sorry, but who are you? 
Jasper asked looking straight into my eyes. What, was all I could say. Who are you? Why did you just age UG me? Jasper, it's me, Saren. I'm sorry, but I don't know you, and I don't appreciate you age ugging me like that, I looked to Grace and Ronan and then to Kendrick and Jason, and they were just as shocked as I was. Dude, what's the matter with you? That's Saren, you know, your mate, our Luna, Kendrick said gritting his teeth so the humans wouldn't hear. Jasper just looked at him confused and lifted his brow again. Bro, I don't have a mate, and the pack doesn't have a Luna, I gasped at his words. What was even more insane was that in his mind, he was telling the truth. He truly believed that he didn't have a mate and that I wasn't the pack's Luna. This isn't a conversation to have here, Ronan said to them. Officer, may we please take my son home? Yes, I have already gotten his statement, and he seems to be in perfect health, so you may take him. Thank you, officer, Ronan led the boys out and I just looked at Grace and wanted to break down. Grace, what's happening? I asked softly as she put her arm around my shoulders and led me out of the police station. I don't know sweetheart, she said trying to console me. We will have Dr. Andrews have a look at him when we get home, I just nodded my head and she led me to the car. Angelo was waiting and he bowed his head to Jasper. And opened the door for him. He got into the first back seat, and out of habit, I was going to sit next to him, but he stopped me. What are you doing? he asked with what sounded like disgust in his voice. I was completely shocked at the tone he used with me that I just stood there. Saren, sit with us in the back, let Aunt Grace sit with him, Jason said and pulled me to the second back seat with them. I was between Kendrick and Jason, and the entire drive back to the castle, Jasper didn't acknowledge me once. He was too busy talking with Grace and Ronan. I could feel my heart breaking the entire ride and couldn't help the tears that were silently falling down my cheeks. Kendrick pulled me close to him and I knew that he and Jason were mind-linking. When we got back to the castle, we all got out of the car, but Jasper didn't wait for me before going inside the castle. Angelo noticed the change in his behavior. Beta, what's going? Why is the Alpha acting as if the Luna doesn't exist? Something's not right, he doesn't remember Saren, and he said that she's not his mate and that she isn't the Luna, Kendrick answered while still holding me close. What? That doesn't make sense. You're right it doesn't, Jason replied. Angelo, sh, t's going to hit the fan hard and fast if Jasper voices that Saren isn't his mate or the Luna. Make sure that no one and I mean no one questions Saren's authority in this pack, do I make myself clear? Yes, Beta, Kendrick and Jason led me inside where everyone else was already greeting Jasper. Dot, how's the pregnancy? I hope my missing didn't cause you too much stress. I'm good big brother, I'm good, I'm just happy that you're home now, she said and H. ugged him. Jasper, you son of a asterisk, Milan said and punched him in the arm and gave him a h.ug. Something wasn't right, he remembers Melody being pregnant, and that she's Kendrick's mate, but he doesn't remember me. Alpha, it's good to have you back. Lorenzo, he gave him a firm handshake. I looked at Kendrick and he was thinking the same thing I was. Milan. How's Victor holding up? Has he remembered anything else? He's good. He's doing better at training, but his memory is still a bit a wonky, I looked at Jason who was also just as confused. Jasper. Kendrick called out. Yeah. You remember Lorenzo and Victor. Why wouldn't I? But you don't remember Saren. Jasper looked me dead in the eyes and furrowed his brows. Babe, what do you mean by that? 
Melody asked. Jasper, you don't remember Saren. Why does everyone expect me to remember someone that I've never met? Jasper asked making everyone gasp. William looked at me and communicated with me through our thoughts. Saren, what's going on? I don't know William. Jasper doesn't know who I am, and he's denying that I'm his mate and the Pax Luna. His mark is gone too. William looked at Jasper's neck, and his brows furrowed. He was shocked and confused, but the biggest expression on his face was of concern. Jasper, Saren's your mate and our Luna, how could you forget who she is? Milan asked. Why does everyone keep saying that? She's not my mate, nor the Luna, Jasper said with venom in his voice. He looked straight at me and gave me the dirtiest look. Look, I don't know who you are, or what you've told my pack, but I won't stand by while you brainwash everyone into thinking you're the pack's, Luna. You're not my mate, his words were filled with so much hate and I felt my heart shattering as tears flowed down my face. Jasper didn't show any remorse seeing me cry and just walked away. I couldn't stop myself from falling to my knees as he turned his back on me. His demeanor was cold and hurtful. Jasper was hurting me, and he didn't even care. Saren, everyone tended to me, and tried to console me but nothing was helping. Jasper hated me, and I finally understood why my bond with him felt so weak. His mark was somehow gone, and he didn't love me anymore. Jasper's POV I honestly couldn't understand why everyone expected me to know that Saren girl. I mean, I couldn't deny that she was pretty, but I knew for a fact that she wasn't my mate, I would know my mate when I saw her, and she wasn't it. But I couldn't help but feel a little bad knowing I made her cry that way. I mean, it kind of made me feel a small ping in my heart, but I guess that was just my guilty conscience for speaking to a woman that way, a really pretty woman to be exact. What was stranger was that everyone believed she's my mate, and I mean everyone. My parents, my sister, my best friends, and even Milan. Even Angelo believed it because he addressed her as Luna when we got back to the castle, I heard him ask. She's probably some conniving she-wolf who tricked everyone into thinking she's my mate. What was strange though was that she asked me where my mark went. I don't remember anything about ever being marked. I shook it all off. I was just happy to be home after goddess only knows how long it's been. I got to my room and was ready to take a hot shower and just rest, but when I turned on the lights, the first thing I saw was a H.Ugg photo on the wall above the bed with me and that girl Saren, and I was H.Ugging her from behind, and were both smiling, really big. I jogged over to the bed and stood on it, and on the frame of the photo was a date with a caption. Saren's Luna Ceremony October 20, 2018 What? I looked over at the calendar on the wall by the nightstand, and it was currently February 8, 2019. I looked around the room, and saw more pictures around that used to never be there. I looked at all of them, and they were all pictures of me and that girl Saren together. Some were of us age.ugging, some were selfies, and some were even of us k-sing. This wasn't right. Why were there so many photos of me and that girl together? She's not mate or my girlfriend. This didn't make any sense. I ran to the closet and was shocked to see that half of it was filled with female clothing. Even in the corner of her side was the dress from the so-called Luna ceremony. I ran to my bedroom door. Mom. Dad. Kendrick. Jason. I screamed at the top of my lungs. Within a second everyone was in my room. Jasper, sweetheart, what's the matter, my mom asked. Everyone was in my room, even that girl Saren. I grabbed her the arm, and hard. Jasper, you're hurting me. 
What did you do? I shouted in her face. What is this sh, t? I asked pointing at the photo above my bed. Jasper, that's the photo from her Luna ceremony, don't you remember, my mother asked. What Luna ceremony? How did the pack have a Luna ceremony for someone who isn't my mate? Everyone was looking at me like I was the crazy one. Why did everyone believe that this girl was the Luna? Jasper, what is the matter with you, my sister shouted at me. Me? Everyone here is acting crazy and believes that this is my mate and Luna. Everyone gave me the most disgusted look after I said that. I felt a sudden sting on my cheek and realized that someone slapped me. I looked back and my dad's eyes black with rage and at me. I don't know what happened to you in the week that you've been missing Jasper, but you don't ever call Saren that again, he spat in my face. I looked at Saren with so much hate and anger and all I saw in her eyes was hurt. No fear. Just hurt. What have you done? You've turned my entire family against me. I shouted in her face and shoved her the floor. Get out of my sight. And I want all these pictures out of my room. Take her clothes out too. I shouted at Kendrick and Jason. They just stood there not doing anything. That's an order. I roared in my alpha voice, but they didn't move. Sorry man, even though you're our alpha, she's the Luna, and you know better than anyone that we can't do anything that would hurt her, it goes against every law we have, Kendrick said crossing his arms. Jason followed him, and everyone else just glared at me. Fine, I'll do it myself. I went to the top of my bed, grabbed the photo off the wall, and smashed it to the ground. Jasper! My mother shouted in horror. I went around the room and smashed all of the photos of me and this girl Saren. I don't know how to she did it, but she someone slithered her way into my room over the last week I had been missing, or at least that's what my dad just said, and turned everyone against me. Everyone believes she's the Luna. I went into the closet and grabbed everything she owned and just threw it at her. She disgusted me, but what was even crazier than my family hounding me, was that my wolf blade was hounding me to stop hurting her. He didn't say why though, he just said that what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't understand why. I just ignored him and kept throwing her sh, t out of my closet. When I was done, I turned to face her and wanted to grab her again, but Kendrick and Jason stood in my way. They were, protecting her. What are you doing? What does it look like? Kendrick shouted back at me. We're protecting our Luna. We don't know what happened to you Jasper, but we're not going to idly stand by while you up everything because you lost your memory. Jason shouted as well. Angel, Milan, Aunt Grace, please pick up the Luna's belongings and put them into the guest bedroom across from her office, Kendrick said. Did he say her office? She's not staying on this floor. I shouted. That's no longer up to you to decide, Jasper, my dad said to me sternly. Whatever happened to you has clearly clouded your judgment, and you've intentionally hurt the Pax Luna. That goes against all of our laws. Until we can figure out what happened, you are hereby confined to your room until further notice. What? I have already informed the elders, he said to me. I'm the Alpha. Not right now you're not, he spat. Everyone helped Saren gather her things, and they left my room slamming the door behind them. I was left with a H.H. mess in my room and I was being punished not even an hour after coming back to the castle. What was happening? Kendrick's POV. After leaving Jasper's room, we all helped Saren get settled into the guest room. I made sure to mind Link Maddox and Hugo to guard Jasper's room and put them under strict order from the elders that he is not to leave his room under any circumstances, 
and no one is allowed to visit him unless it's one of the ranked members or his parents. Even his food would have to be delivered by a ranked member or his parents until further notice. Ronan and Grace made sure to let my dad and Jason's parents know what was happening, and make sure that everyone respected Saren. Even if Jasper couldn't remember, she was still the Luna, and she is under everyone's protection. Saren ended up passing out from crying so much, that we just let her sleep. We were currently in Jasper's office trying to figure out what may have happened when Lorenzo came bursting in. We're too late, he shouted. What? we all asked. He knows. Who knows? Lorenzo, you're not making any sense, I said. Alessandro, he knows she exists. We all stood to our feet and stared at him like a madman. I had a vision, he is coming for her. Are you saying that you really have the power of premonition? Milan asked. Yes, I'm sorry I omitted that power, but as I told the Luna, I only get visions when I am supposed to, and this is obviously one of those cases. When he will get here? It's hard to say, but in my vision, the mountains were lush and green, there was no snow, and the sun was high up in the sky. That sounds like the middle of summer, Melody said. Okay, that gives us a minimum of three months maybe four to prepare for this, I say. With Jasper out of commission and Saren emotionally unstable, I had to take point as the beta. Lorenzo, why would it take that long? Not that I'm complaining. Alessandro needs to search for her. He knows of her existence, but not who she is. Remember, she is technically dead, her existence is unknown to many, other than those in this pack, he replied. First artificial rogues, a traitor in the pack, Jasper's gone insane, Saren's a mess, and now we actually have to deal with the vampire. Milan exclaimed. I need to get Saren out of here, Lorenzo said. What? we all shouted. She's our Luna. I shouted at him. And now she is in danger because of your Alpha, he roared shaking Jasper's office. I keep forgetting this guy is an Alpha too. Whatever happened to him in the week he was missing has messed with his mind, and he doesn't remember his own mate. Whatever the cause, it's broken their bond, and now her life is in grave danger. You can't just take our Luna, Jason said to him. According to your Alpha, she's not the Luna. He even trashed her Luna ceremony photo, did he not? How do you know that? Melody asked. Saren and I share a connection as primordials, we can communicate through our thoughts without having a pack link, he replied. Please don't take Saren, this pack needs its Luna, and no one is better than Saren, Grace said to him. We need to figure out what happened to Jasper, Ronan said biting his bottom L, P. Beta, I will give you 30 days to find an answer and a solution, Lorenzo said. And if we don't, Saren comes with me, and I will protect her. She is obviously no longer safe here he said without any hesitation and left the office. Ken, I don't think that was an empty threat, Jason said to me. Uncle Ronan, Aunt Grace, can he really take her? Milan asked. That's up to Saren. As of right now, she is our Luna, even if Jasper doesn't want to believe it or accept, but if Saren chooses to leave... She has every right to do so since Jasper is basically rejecting her. She wouldn't leave, would she? Melody asked. If we don't figure out what happened to him, and in 30 days, then she just might, I say to everyone in the office. 30 days. We had 30 days to save their bond or we lose our Luna. Chapter 47 Saren's POV it's been two weeks since Jasper came home and acted as if he doesn't know me. Well, technically, it wasn't an act. 
he really didn't know me. Ronan and the elders have allowed Jasper out of his room, but Kendrick is currently the acting alpha until Jasper comes to his senses, whenever that will be. Kendrick is under a lot of stress, as is everyone else trying to figure out what happened. Even Dr. Andrews ran some tests and Jasper was in perfect health. Jasper acts normal around everyone. It's like nothing about him changed, except the fact that he hates me now. Jasper refuses to eat in the dining room with us if I'm there, so either I would eat in my new room, or Jasper would eat in his office. So far, everyone would rather eat with me than with him, so it's mostly him in his office alone. I've been having trouble eating lately as I can't seem to keep anything down. As soon as I finish a meal, which is very little in and of itself, I throw everything up. All I want to do sleep with a warm blanket, which is currently what I'm trying to do right now. Saran. Come in, I sat up when I saw Grace peek her head in the door. I saw that she had a tray of oatmeal and fruit for me. You need to eat something sweetheart, she said and closed the door behind her. She put the tray on my lap, and I just stared at the food. Oatmeal was one of my favorite foods, and it was something that Jasper helped me discover when I first moved into the castle. Whenever I was overworked from training, or we had late mornings together, he would always make me oatmeal to eat, and that alone brought tears to my eyes. Why does he hate me? I asked looking at Grace unable to stop the tears. I don't know honey, I really don't, she said cupping my cheek. But I promise everyone is working hard to find out what is happening with him, she gave me a motherly age. Ug. You need to eat, I nodded my head and grabbed the spoon, but the moment I brought a spoonful of the oatmeal to my mouth, the smell made me sick, and I started to gag. I dropped the spoon, moved the tray, and ran straight to the adjoining bathroom. Because I hadn't eaten anything since yesterday afternoon, there was nothing to throw up but liquid. Grace came in after me and was tapping my back to help me get everything out and holding my hair back for me. When I was finally done, I flushed the toilet, blew my nose, and Grace helped me sit up straight. She grabbed a wee dot tea towel and helped clean me up. What's wrong with me? I asked softly trying to keep myself from throwing up again. Saren, when was the last time you and Jasper had X? I just looked at her in dismay. Why was she asking me that? Sweetheart, it's important that you tell me. The day he disappeared. That morning we had X in the shower when he came back from training, I answered. Jasper and I had X often at least when he used to love me. So about three weeks ago, she asked, and I nodded my head. I think I know what's going on, come with me, she helped me to my feet and made me change. I put on a sweater, and some leggings, with my Ugg boots, and she took me straight to the pack hospital. I was confused as to why we were coming here. Even though I was throwing up a lot, I didn't think it required me having to see Dr. Andrews. Luna, is everything all right? Irene asked coming up to us. You look so pale, she said with sympathy in her voice. Irene, be a dear and fetch Dr. Andrews. Yes, Aunt Grace. That won't be necessary, I'm right here, Dr. Andrews said coming around the corner. Grace, Luna. What can I do for you? he asked. Dr. Andrews, I believe Saren may be expecting, Grace said, but I was too dizzy to even comprehend what she meant by that. Grace, bring her this way, Dr. Andrews said. We followed him to a room where there was a weird looking machine. Luna, please take off your pants and your underwear, and lie down on the bed, he said to me. I looked at Grace not knowing if he was serious. It's okay sweetheart, she said to me and ushered me to take off my leggings, so I did. 
I lied down on the bed that was covered with paper, and what looked like a cotton pad right where would go. Luna, I need you to scoot down a little more, spread your legs, and put your feet here, he said and pointed at two things at the end of the bed. I nodded my head and did what he said. I watched as he pulled out some rod-looking thing and my eyes popped out of my head. Don't worry, Luna, it won't hurt, Irene said keeping me calm. Luna, this may feel a bit strange, but don't move, okay? Dr. Andrews said and I nodded my head again. I felt him insert the rod thing up my VA, and I saw him turn on the small television right in front of me on the wall. It was weird, fuzzy, and black and white. I felt him move the thing around and then something appeared on the screen. Dr. Andrews, is that? Grace asked. It is Grace, he said. It's just as you suspected, he paused the screen. The Luna is pregnant, the moment he said that I started to cry and hard. I was pregnant, I was carrying Jasper's pup, and Jasper hated me. How was I going to tell him that I was pregnant when he wants nothing to do with me? Oh, sweetheart, don't cry, Grace said and came to H.U.G. me. Dr. Andrews, Irene, this information does not leave this room. But Grace, the Luna is carrying a future Alpha, Dr. Andrews said in protest. And his or her father currently hates their mother so the last thing we need is for Jasper to find out and do something that could potentially harm my grandchild, Grace snapped at him. Irene, you will not tell anyone, especially Keaton. Yes, Aunt Grace, Irene replied and bowed her head in respect. Saren, we're going to get through this, okay? Don't cry. Grace and I stayed in the room for a little while longer so I could cry comfortably with only her. Dr. Andrews and Irene had long ago left the room to give us privacy. Once I had calmed down, Grace helped me get cleaned up and put my clothes back on. We left the hospital, but instead of taking me back to my room, she took me to the kitchen and made me sit on the stool at the island. What are we doing here, Aunt Grace? I asked with no energy. You need to eat. But I can't keep anything down. If I know you as well as I think I do, then I know you take after your mother. When Megan was pregnant with you, the only thing she could keep down was red meat and potatoes, nothing else, she replied and pulled out a steak from the fridge. She cut it up into bite-sized pieces seasoned with salt and pepper and just threw it onto a frying pan. As it was searing, she went to the pantry and pulled out a package of instant mashed potatoes, and quickly made that up. It didn't take long for the steak to cook since she cut it up. When it was done, she plated the meat and potatoes for me and put it in front of me. I took the fork and stabbed a piece of meat and saw she cooked it rare. I slowly brought it to my mouth and strangely, the smell of blood and meat didn't make me want to vomit. It made my stomach growl with hunger. I put it in my mouth and slowly chewed it and swallowed it. I waited a minute or so, and I didn't feel it coming back up. I knew it, just like Megan, Grace said to me. I smiled and slowly ate the rest of my food. I'll make sure that this all that you're fed, until your morning sickness calms down, she said to me and I smiled in return. If you're finished, go on up to your room and take a nice warm bath. Not too hot though because that's bad for the pup, I nodded my head and went up to my room. As I made it to our floor, I passed by Jasper's room and stopped a minute. I contemplated if I should tell him, but I knew that it was a bad idea. I kept walking and I barely made it two feet before his door opened and he came out. I figured he would just ignore me, but he didn't. You must be really happy knowing that you've turned everyone against me, he said with disgust. I didn't reply and just wanted to keep walking, but he didn't let me. Look at me when I'm talking to you, he shouted and turned me around forcefully. 
he grabbed my shoulders and got down to my eye level. His teal eyes were so beautiful, but they were no longer filled with love, they were filled with hate. Jasper, please, I'm tired, I just want to go lay down, I said to him. You're tired? Well too bad. I want to know what you did to make everyone believe that you're my mate and the Pax Luna. I didn't do anything. I am your mate, and the Pax Luna, I said to him. Shut up, he spat in my face. Jasper had never used that kind of language or tone with me before. I honestly didn't know who this Jasper was. Jasper, please, please try and remember, I begged him. There had to be some part of him that remembered me. I said shut up. Are you defying your alpha? I'm the Luna. You can't command me. I shouted at him. Neil, he shouted as he stepped back, but I just stood there. Was he trying to test if he could actually command me? I said Neil, he growled. I told you. You can't command me. I'm also an Alpha. I growled back. He flinched at my words, and I thought he was going to let this go, but he didn't. He lunged at me and grabbed me by the throat, lifting me in the air. Jasper was choking me. Do you know what the penalty is for disobeying and disrespecting the Alpha? Do you know the penalty for threatening the Luna? A massive roar shook the hallway. Jasper and I turned to see who it was, and Jasper dropped me when he saw Kendrick and Ronan exit Jasper's office. Ronan helped me to my feet as I coughed for air and I watched it Kendrick punched Jasper across the face and he landed on the floor. What can? Jasper exclaimed. I should be saying that you Jasper. Kendrick snarled. You were choking the Luna. How many times do I have to tell everyone that she's not the Luna? Jasper shouted getting to his feet and punching Kendrick back, but Kendrick didn't fall over. Jasper was shocked when he saw Kendrick still standing. What? You're weak Jasper, Kendrick spat. You're no longer strong because you've denied your mate, your Luna, our Luna. Jasper was stepped back in disbelief and looked at me. He didn't say anything else and just went back to his room, slamming the door behind him. Saren, are you all right sweetheart? Ronan asked. I didn't even answer. I pushed him away and went into my room, locking the door. I face-planted the bed and started to cry again. Callie was whimpering and howling as well. Because Jasper's mark was gone. She couldn't communicate with Blade anymore, so she also lost her mate. Kendrick's POV After Saren locked herself in her room, I stormed over to Jasper's room and found he also locked it. But that wasn't going to stop me from getting in. I kicked the door open with everything that I had, and it splintered completely coming off its hinges. What? Jasper exclaimed as the door almost hit him in the back of the head. I charged in and tackled him to the ground, punching him several times across the face. Jasper found his opening and socked me as well making me stumble back. Ken. What is your problem? What is your problem? I yelled back. Do you understand what you just did? You tried to K. LL the Luna of this pack. I get it. You don't believe us. You don't remember her, but that doesn't give you the right to harm her in any way, shape, or form man. This is my pack. This is her pack too. Don't you get it? You're the only one who doesn't see her as your mate, or this pack's Luna. All 800 plus members of this pack do. Doesn't that tell you something? Yeah. She used dark magic. No, UIT. Something is wrong with you. And only you. I rubbed my face vigorously at how stupid Jasper is. Let me ask you something, you remember Lorenzo, right? Yet. Yeah. 
Tell me, do you remember why he's here in the first place? Jasper blinked several times before speaking. We found him in Italy, and he's one of those rare wolves, a primordial, and he was coming to help us, with something. What is that something? I asked him. I, I don't remember. Do you remember where we found him? Italy. Why were we looking for him? I don't remember. Doesn't that tell you anything? The fact that there are gaps in your memory? The fact that you remember everyone that you've ever met, but yet the one person you can't seem to remember is the one person that you should be remembering. Jasper looked at me confused not knowing what to say. Jasper, you saw the date of the Luna ceremony on the photo before you destroyed it, right? He nodded his head. Doesn't it seem odd that you can remember people you met months after that, yet, even with the proof of her being your mate and the Luna, you don't remember Saren, and borderline even hate her? I, he just looked at me even more confused. He grabbed his head and grunted in frustration. Tell me this then, my mom, do you know what happened to her? Yeah, Tarine K, LLED her and my dad is looking for proof. And who told you that it was Tareen that K, LLED her? Jasper looked at me blankly. I, wait, why can't I remember who told me? I knew it. Anything and everything that had to do with Saren was erased from Jasper's memories. I need to put on the lid on this before he made an even bigger mistake. I'm telling you right now Jasper, stop being a D. CK to Saren until we figure out what happened to you while you were missing. We have just over two weeks to figure this out. What happens in two weeks? He asked me genuinely concerned. Lorenzo had threatened to take Saren away from the pack. Why would he do that? Why does he even care? To protect her. I screamed at him making him jump back. You don't get it. Saren's life is in danger. The one thing that you promised to never let happen was for that vampire to figure out her existence, but because your mark is now gone, and you've started to treat her like sh, t, he knows now. Our pack is in danger because of you. And in order to save our pack, Lorenzo has to take Saren away from here. Vampire? Alessandro. You remember the vampire's name? Yeah, I remember doing research about him, but I can't remember why. Shouldn't that tell you something? Seriously, Jasper, think about all the sh, t you've doing been the last several months. Everything you've done is to protect Saren, and yet somehow you're forgetting that she even exists. That's because she doesn't. I have no memories of her in my life. She's not my mate. You better pray to the moon goddess that we can fix this because if we don't, there's nothing stopping Saren from leaving the pack. I turned my heel to leave, oh and one other thing, whatever you do, don't have X with anyone, because then you're really going to be inged, you can't tell me not to have X. If you care about the future of this pack at all, then you'll do what I say. Jasper. I walked out of the room. I'll send someone to fix the door. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description, rest audiobook will be continued in next episode.